All righty, guys. Welcome, Ben, to the After Shrock, the uh, show that we do after the show the, uh, to cover all the stuff that I didn't get to because an hour just isn't enough time to get to everything that's going on every week. And everybody's got questions, so I want to make sure we have an opportunity to get everybody taken care of. So as I pack up my stuff, I start another stream up here so that uh, you guys can join in, ask any questions that you might have. Uh, you ask, you know, what kind of chocolate is Thor eating this week? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, we can have some fun and chit chat a little bit before I uh, head home to the fam. So, stuff I didn't get to this week. Um, this story, I didn't even cover it because I'm so tired of hearing about Russian hacking in the elections and stuff. It's just, I'm tired of it. Everybody's tired of it, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm just tired of it and I'm projecting on to you guys. But uh, Russian election meddling continues, says the U.S. Why can't it be stopped? Okay, why can't it be stopped? The U.S. is struggling to find a way to deter hacking and other interference. This whole story basically says, what are you going to do? So the Russians, the Russians aren't, well, they are. Okay, here's the thing. Russia is a nation state. The United States is a nation state. They are foes on the world stage. They're competitors on the foreign stage. We're going to do things to each other to give ourselves a competitive advantage. So this headline could be better rewritten as, why can't the US defend itself from Russian hacking attempts? Now, we could counterattack, but they don't really have fair elections in Russia. So, you know, Vladimir Putin wins every time, you know, except for when he can't run because he's barred by the constitution. Then, uh, what is it, Medvedev or whatever wins, who is like, Putin's best friend. He might even be a son or something. I don't know. So the bottom line here is there are no consequences for Russian meddling because what are we going to do? The Russians don't care about sanctions because they have oil to sell. They have the largest diamond production in, in the world, second only to Africa, I think. Um, they've got very, very lucrative natu natural, national natural resources. Um, so they can withstand sanctions unlike other countries. They don't care. They'll trade directly with China. China doesn't do sanctions. They just don't follow them. They don't care. So what do you do? I mean, we could go to war, I guess. We could start sinking ships and knocking planes out of the sky. Um, yes, the Russians have some super cool, you know, ultrasonic weapons. Unfortunately, they're super cool ultrasonic weapons. They don't have a lot of them. So, um, yeah, they would, uh, they'd be a couple spectacular kabooms. And then after that, um, you know, well, that's escalated quickly, you know, <laughs> like all of a sudden we'd be pointing nukes at each other. So we can't exactly go to war over this. And how do we stop it? Well, most of what Russia is doing is not actually even hacking, which is why it's so frustrating for me to hear these stories. Russia is creating botnets on Facebook and then cause it to, sending these bots, these fake people out to comment on stories. So they, they, they have a, a pot of fake bots over here called liberals and a pot of fake bots over here called conservatives. And they make them fight with each other online. And it gets the real people riled up. And then they start fighting online. The whole point of the Russian thing is to sow discord. They want us fighting with each other because if we are fighting with each other, we will not be able to effectively fight them. Mission accomplished, right? So there you go. That's what the Russian hacking is all about. Honestly, it's social media. That, that's 99% of what they're doing is social media. They're not actually hacking into voting machines that I know of anyway. There have been attempts that have been made to do so. Um, and yes, in theory, it could be done. But to my knowledge, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but right now, this is, this is primarily social engineering. And the Soviet Union used to do this to us all the time too, guys. I mean, I was just a little kid, but I remember, oh, wow, the Russians, you know, Ronald Reagan is a crazy cowboy. Um, you know, there were 80s songs about the, the, the cowboy with the nukes pointing him at the sky and stuff. And it's, it's funny how the world has come full circle. The price of gas is up 300% and the world has come full circle in 30 years. So here we are again, same day, diff, same story, different tools. All right, so I didn't cover that one because I felt that no one's going to gain anything from it. It's like watching one of those cable news exchanges where everybody yells at each other and at the end that no one's changed anyone's mind and no one's learned anything and you're just like why did i waste you know two minutes of my life watching that all right good morning kathy how are you doing today all right thomas made it had to shut down fallout 4 to do it though oh well i'm sorry about that hopefully hopefully you're able to uh, to get back in there fallout 4 from what I, I haven't played it i don't get to play video games anymore i'm just uh, i'm either getting too old or i'm just too busy 
but my son had a Fortnite birthday party uh, yesterday. We had we, okay, we hired this game truck to come out, right? So that all the boys could go out into this game truck and all play together. Because one of the things that really annoys me about the video games now is video games are more social than ever. So you're actually playing with other real people online. You're having conversations with them. You're talking to them. You're coordinating with them. You're, you're making friendships and bonds with these people, but you're not in the same room together. So wouldn't it be cool if we could get all the boys that play online in the same room together to play together? But with Fortnite, which is a, it's a really, for those of you who don't know, it's a really popular uh, first-person shooting game, uh, what's called cartoon violence, basically, where you're shooting other guys. 100 people get dropped out of a party bus by parachute onto a map, and the objective is you don't have anything when you get on the map. You have to go you know, find your weapons. You have to forage for everything. Uh, so there's strategy involved. There's teamwork involved. And then once you get your weapons, you just fight, and the last man standing wins. Um, so that's or the last squad standing, depending on the version of the game you're playing. So wouldn't it be cool if we got them all together in one big game bus so they could all be on one like 50 v 50 squad and just go, go after it? So we call this party bus company, and they say we can, have, we can support 32 people playing simultaneously. So we tell them we want to do a Fortnite party. We have 12 guests, okay, because I understand you can do 30-something people in your, in your vehicle, but that's playing multiple people on the same console. So four kids playing on the same console. With Fortnite, they can only play one person per console. You get the whole screen to yourself. So we have 12 guests. Can you do that? Oh, of course we can do that. The party bus shows up 15 minutes late. <laughs> 15 minutes late. The guy opening it up doesn't even know how to turn the lights on. He has a 300-foot LAN cable that he needs me to plug into my internet, which I understand, you know, Wireless internet would be a horrible idea for gaming. Totally cool. I want the kids to have a good experience. I'm going to run this cable. So I'm run this big cable 300 feet into my house, plug it into my router, get it all set up. Now we're good to go, right? No. He didn't update. You're going to appreciate this one, guys, video game guys out there. He didn't, they hadn't updated any of their consoles. So each TV has a Wii U, a Switch, an Xbox One, and an Xbox 360 on it. Oh, and a PS4. And he turns them all on because he doesn't know what console the kids are going to want to use, right? And they all, first of all, he has a wireless network in there. They didn't do it wired, which I was like, why wouldn't you do it wired? But they have the wireless network in there. All the consoles start updating simultaneously. So, first of all, you're trashing your own wireless network because every console is updating at the same time, number one. And number two, they use 10 gigs of my data plan in two hours because they were updating all their stuff. Why wouldn't, you're a business, you're coming out, so first of all, the kids who are 15 minutes late, so the kids are like, eh, what are we gonna do? This birthday party is great, Jacob. And then when they came out, the stuff wasn't updated, it took another 20 minutes to get everything updated before they could play. So we brought them in, gave them cake and stuff, did all the cake first, like stalling basically. My wife was brilliant. We're stalling them, so stalling the children so they can go out and play in the bus. So then they go out on the bus and they're all used to playing on Xbox, guess what? None of the Xboxes work. None of them work. So they're all playing on PS4s, and they don't know the controls. Some of them are trying to play on the Switch, but the Switch has a horrible frame rate, so it doesn't work right. It was wow. So this company, uh, this this the, the game game truck, you can Google them, game truck. Uh, I'm going to be writing a review for them on Google later, but they've been in business since 2015, and they have no Google reviews, none at all. And so I, I hate to do this. I mean, I try to leave good reviews because I'm a business owner. And when people leave bad reviews, especially on Google, it destroys you. So I'm really, really hesitant to give another business a bad review. But given everything that happened, they still have had me pay full price. There was He was on the phone with his boss. He told his boss he was late. He told it because his boss was like, why are you there a half an hour past the time that you're supposed to be there? They have to pay for that. He's like, well, I was a little late getting here and getting set up and everything. And so, you know, because at least the guy decided to stay a half hour late. That, that was what was within his, the employee's capability to do to make things right. There was no refund. There was no partial refund. There was no credit, no gift certificate for the next time we call them out. You know, furthermore, when we went to their, their website, there's a picture. Of, I'm thinking 32 kids can play Fortnite, right? That's a tractor trailer. That's like a semi pulling up. I'm expecting this huge, impressive ESPN looking semi to pull up. No, a pickup truck drives up towing a trailer that the kids go in and sit in. Literally like, like a construction trailer. And I'm like, we paid $300 for this? What a joke, oh my gosh. 
So I didn't leave a review yesterday because I was kind of emotional about it, and I didn't want to be that ranting guy. Um, and the employee was good. He was he was nice. Uh, the employees apparently make about 15 bucks an hour, and they appreciate tips. I didn't tip him. Uh, I asked my wife. I was like, listen, because I'm, I'm always, I don't know. It The guy was late. Yes, that was his fault. Uh, they dispatched from North Omaha. Maybe he didn't realize how long it would take to get to Papillion, Nebraska, um, which is like a suburb on the opposite side of Omaha. Um, he should have known. They should have had the truck updated the day before. Those are management level things. And then he's like, oh yeah, we're just kind of getting started on this one. This one is new. And this console over here is kind of buggy. So we don't, and like, it looks like they bought their equipment like used from GameStop. There's like chunks, like the face plates are missing off of the stuff. I mean, I did, this was not like a high end fun experience that I expected it to be for the kids. I think they would have honestly had more fun if they would have all brought a screen in an Xbox from home and set up a LAN party at the house. I think that would have been more fun. Um, so yeah, that's that's a sad story. So anyway, I digress. So even even we have technological letdowns. But uh, so yeah, Fallout 4, totally get it. All right, Russia's been doing similar things for decades. Yes, they have, Thomas. Uh, using student groups to influence public opinion, planting opinions and disinformation. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Kathy's formerly from Lincoln, so that's how you found us originally. See, I thought you just found us in Florida, Kathy. All right, have you heard anything about Windows 10 moving to a monthly subscription? There have been talk, there's been talk about subscriptions for a long time. First of all, it probably won't be monthly. It'll probably be an annual subscription. The thing is, with your Windows 10 right now, when you buy a new computer, like a truck, about $150 of the cost of that computer is the Windows license. That's how much it costs us to put Windows 10 on the computer. More if you get Windows 10 Professional. Now, if you as the consumer have to pay for Windows, well, you're paying for it anyway. When you buy the computer, you're paying 150 bucks for Windows. Now, let's assume that your PC's lifespan is the average lifespan, which is 18 months. Let's make the, the math easy and say you're paying $180 for 18 months. You're paying $10 a month for Windows, right? Now, people who've had our modular computers are getting a pretty good deal because they're using that computer for six to 10 years. So you're paying pennies for Windows as opposed to the guy who's paying dollars for Windows. But if they move it to a subscription, I'm going to guess it's going to follow the Microsoft 360 model, where you've got or the 365 model, where you pay annually. Uh, it's like 99 bucks a year, and then you get it for a year. But for Windows, it'll probably be something small, like 3 or $5 a month. Uh, they'll, they'll call it a micro payment. Now, obviously, if they divide, or not a month, I'm, I'm sorry, not $3 a month, but 3 or $5 a year. Now, if you divide that micro payment up into monthly payments, the money that Microsoft would be getting from your monthly payment would be eaten up by fees. So they're going to have you pay annually um, when the time comes, which you're already basically doing now. It's just you don't see it because it's wrapped up into the cost of the computer. So Moore's Law is going to be defeated soon. Well, the price of the computers are going to come down about 150 bucks when Microsoft yanks the, the, the Windows out of the computer and makes the customers pay directly for it. That's not going to be popular. and Microsoft understands that. Um, so my guess is, is initially it'll be rolled in as an option for, for people like us that sell computers. We can have the customer, we can set up a, a subscription for Windows and say, here's your Windows subscription. Right now, by eliminating all the old versions of Windows and, co and concentrating on just the most recent two versions of Windows 10, Microsoft is saving so much money on support that there's no rush for them to do this right now. Someday, probably, yes, they're going to do something like this, but not any time in the near future. All righty. Columbus, woohoo! How are you doing, Columbus? We had a data recovery from Carney last week. That was pretty cool. Using a Verizon hotspot for internet, Keith? Yeah, I feel sorry for you, buddy. That, that's rough. Uh, let's see. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? And an apology, get a refund and an apology to your son. You know, okay, so here's the thing. I was trying, you know, some of these sons are in my scout troop, you know, so I'm the scout, you know, one of the scout leaders. I'm an assistant scout master, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to I'm going to stay calm. Like I said, yesterday I was kind of hot about it, so I didn't leave a review. My wife plans the most amazing birthday parties. And she does it because she loves doing it. And she loves our kids, obviously, but she loves planning parties. She has a passion for it. So when it's an excuse to plan a party, she's going to plan this amazing party. And there's all these Fortnite decorations. Like, we went out and got pallets, and we made a wooden wall out of pallets. There were bricks on the table. If you've ever played Fortnite, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, most of you probably haven't. But anyway, the uh, you know she went out, and <laughs> she's like, Boys, and Jacob, she looks at my son, she goes, I'm sorry that you're not having fun at your birthday party. We're trying to get it all straightened out. And then she looks at the game truck guy. We're trying to get it straightened out. I'm sorry you're not having fun at your birthday party. 
And that's all she said. And she walked out of the truck. And that was the last time she went into the truck. And the guy, the employee, I felt bad for him because it's like, you know, my neighbors were like, you want me to go in there and yell at him for you? And I'm like, what good is it going to do? The guy is doing everything he can do. This is poor management, poor planning, poor execution. He was handed a turd and told to make it work. He's doing the best he can do. I'm not going to tear his world. Now, I'm not going to tip him either. I'm not going to tear his world up, though, for, you know, the experience. But I am going to talk to management about the experience. And we'll see. He had me sign the form. My wife's like, why would you sign that? And I was like, listen, it's the guy's job to get a signature. You know, I've had customers like that at Schrock that something has gone wrong. And, you know, most of our customers, when stuff goes wrong, they're like, hey, Thor, we get it. You know, not a problem. We're, we'll work with you on it. You know, we'll get it done. And stuff doesn't go wrong all that often. But every business has a, a time when something goes wrong. And when something goes wrong, having your customer ripping you apart or ripping one of your employees apart at the front desk doesn't help. So I didn't know I was going to tear the guy up. But, and my wife didn't either. But we'll talk to management, you know. And I hate to do that. I wouldn't want to leave a negative Google review now, sir. I hate to do that, too, because that, that's, a, that's a real jerk move. But honestly, right now, I mean, I wouldn't give the guys zero stars because the kids did have fun once everything got rolling. Things went according to plan for the most part. They didn't have enough consoles for 12 kids to play Fortnite because there was only five TVs in the truck. So they all had to switch off. So half the time, half the kids were playing other games they weren't really there to play on, like, the Switches and stuff. But they had fun all the same, okay? So I'm not going to give them zero stars because it worked. The kids had a good time. But it wasn't, it wasn't what was pictured on the website, and it wasn't what we expected given specific even when the guy called back to confirm he was on the way and I am aware he said I am aware of the Fortnite theme for your party and we'll be ready to go well they obviously weren't ready for the Fortnite theme for the party because you need more than five consoles for that um, we probably wouldn't have booked the game truck if we would have known that only five kids could play at one time out of 12 but he did the best he could all right yeah we'll, we'll, we'll complain you know and I would be okay with a partial refund like I said the kids had a good time so I'd be okay with a partial refund at least then what I could do is I could post my review I could give the company like three stars instead of like zero or two and say listen this what you see on their website is not what's gonna come to your house um, they're gonna send a truck to your house that has five screens and if the kids are playing a game that has that requires one kid per console they can only play five kids at a time keep that in mind when you plan your party um, we didn't realize that, but after the fact, um, you know, we made it work. We had to we had to roll with the punches. We made it work, but they did give us a partial refund. That would be the review, as opposed to wow, they were 15 minutes late. The kids the kids had to trade off controllers because there weren't enough consoles for them all to play. Um, the game truck says it supports 32. We had 12. Only five could play. So they had dead consoles. They had uh, audio that didn't work. The guy didn't know where the light switches were when he got there. I mean, that's how bad the review could be. Um, the, 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 the thing is air conditioned, right? My wife comes and she goes, it's hot as hell in there. Those kids are going to need, she's getting more drinks for the kids. They're all sweating in there. They're going to be like dehydrated when they come back in from playing. They'll go home and pass out. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I go out there and sure enough, one of the air conditioners isn't turned on. And I'm like, hey, is that air conditioner supposed to be on? I was like, oh yeah, boop, and turns it on. There's not a checklist for you to turn everything on? Come on. So yeah, I mean. I don't, I don't want to torture company because every company makes mistakes. Every company needs to grow. And they have no Google reviews, none. So if I leave a negative review, everybody who Googles, if they're going to do the game truck, and they see the, the other place in town has five-star review with only two reviews, but a five-star review nonetheless, and the game truck company has a one, two-star review, they're not going to call the game truck company. That's, the, that's why I'm asking you. I ask you guys all the time for Google reviews because... All it takes is one ticked off angry customer or one competitor. We have competitors all the time posting negative reviews on us. And at least we were done with that. All the ones that are local to us have already done it. But now that we're moving into Des Moines, there's a whole new plethora of customer of negative people that can post for us. But uh, but yeah, so that's why we push it all the time. I don't, so this isn't my this isn't my gripe session. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm turning it into that though. All right, leave the review. Otherwise, other folks will be disappointed. This is true. Um, yeah, they slow me down after 15 megabyte. Yeah, they'll throttle you, Keith. That's right, Kathy. It's not the it's not the text fault. He was super apologetic and he was super nice. You know, um, the boys didn't even seem to mind his giant nose ring. You know, it. <laughs> but he was a nice. He was a genuinely nice guy. Uh, he reminded me of one of my junior technicians. That's like doing the best he can with what he's got. And literally, like all the boys at the same time were hitting him with like, my console doesn't work. My I don't have internet. 
you didn't have internet because all the games were updating. It was using up all the wireless, so there was no bandwidth left in the truck. And there was some weird, like, bubble effect in that truck that was destroying, like, my phone. I lost all signal on my phone when I went into that truck. So I don't know how the Wi-Fi was even competing, but I don't know what, something was going on. All right. Let's see. Okay, so those, those are all the questions. Let's see. Is there, is there a Google review app? You know, good question. There is not. What you want to do to leave a Google review is you can go, if you go and open up Google, so go to google.com, and then search for Schrock Innovations and then whatever city you're in, Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, Schrock Innovations, Lincoln, for example. And then on the right, there's a, it brings up the little business bubble that shows you the location, the hours, are they open now, peak times of day, things like that. You click on the write a review link. And when you click on the write a review link, then you can leave a review. You do have to have a Google account to do it. Uh, so the, the competitors who leave negative reviews for us actually create a fake Google account, just like the Russians, and then leave a Google review. Um, there are Google review bot houses that you can call. Like, I need 500 five-star reviews, and you, you pay like 25 bucks, and then all of a sudden, the, the Russian Google bot goes, boop, 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 and then you have 500, you know, four or five-star. They don't want to make them all five-star, because that's, that's fishy. But you'll notice, like, you can look at, look at some of our competitors, actually, and you can see they're buying Google reviews, because you can see this dude from, literally from, like, Uzbekistan, um, I was traveling in town and loved their work. Mm. They did great for my laptop when I was in it. Maybe the guy was in Uzbekistan. But when three or four of your top five reviews are from Europe and you don't have something like the Schrock desk, or, you know, like maybe the guy's German and he's got a lot of friends and he immigrated. I don't know. Something's fishy there. So we don't, we don't ever buy reviews. Uh, we don't buy Facebook followers either. Click the like button on Facebook and you'll see this more often. But we don't buy those things because then I don't know how I'm doing. If, if if I buy, if I stuff my reviews to, to off, offset bad reviews, like I think the Lincoln Service Center has a 3.8. I mean, it's been in business for 20 years. So it's hard to keep a 5.0 rating over 20 years because you're going to have situations happen. But uh, 3.8 is a little lower than normal, usually over a 4. So we've really been pushing them in Lincoln, actually. When I'm there and I'm seeing customers, I'm asking them to leave us reviews because there's always a tendency to leave a review when something goes wrong. And I try, when I go out to a new restaurant or something, I always try to think to myself, I'm going to leave them a review because the service was great. And nobody ever thinks about leaving a review when everything works, when everything goes well. That's how it's expected to be. When's the last time you went through a drive through and you had someone in the window who actually made eye contact, didn't throw your change at you out the window, didn't drop your food on the floor in the, in the room, and actually you got your food in and out, boom, boom, boom. You know, no one leaves reviews for stuff like that because that's just how it's supposed to work, right? But when it doesn't work that way, like, hey, I went to Taco Bell, and I think the guy in the window was high, um, you know, that's a review, all right? So, you know, stuff, stuff happens. But uh, anyway, so other stories that we didn't get to here today. PC sales are actually growing. Why are they growing right now? They've been declining for years. The PC is dead, all that stuff. Why are they growing? It's because, well, first of all, you had Windows 8 and Windows Vista all lose support. So those people have to buy new computers. If you haven't done that already, if you're running Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows XP, or Windows Vista, if you do not connect to the internet, you are fine. You can keep running those computers all day long. But if you connect to the internet for anything, even if you have antivirus from somebody, your computer is a walking, talking virus magnet. I guarantee you, you're probably infected right now. <clears throat> so you really need to buy a new computer that you can protect. Now, Windows 7, which Keith loves, is going to lose its support in 2020. So what we're seeing here is PC sales are probably going to continue to increase until about 2020. And then we're going to see, a, we're going to see peak PC, and then it's going to, the decline is going to resume again, and then it's going to level out. So it's going up because everybody, businesses, everybody's replacing their old computers for a lot of reasons. Number one, if you're medical, dental, uh, optometrist, anything like that. Anybody who's got to worry about HIPAA violations. If you're using Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 8 or 8.1, you are no longer HIPAA compliant. Now you can purchase extended support for some of these operating systems from Microsoft. It's very expensive. That's what the military does because the military, before they can install Windows 10, it has to go through a whole battery of tests to make sure there's no back doors and stuff like that. So they're still running, I believe it's uh, Windows 7 in, in most military bases. Um, some places still run older versions of Windows, but they're buying extended support from Microsoft. And the way that works is Microsoft says this team costs X number of dollars. So we have 20 companies that need support. 
this team, cost of team plus profit margin divided by 20. Well, then when this company decides to upgrade to Windows 10, now there's only 19. So the cost is now divided by 19, 18, 17, 16, until you have one or two companies paying this astronomical cost, like the U.S. government basically, paying this astronomical cost for support until they finally say, okay, it's time to move on, and they drop it and move on. Um, so PC sales are going to continue to go up, but Mac sales are crashing. Why are Mac sales crashing? It's because Apple has completely ignored their line of computers for over a year and a half now. Um, literally, there have been no updates, no upgrades. Bigger screens, nicer screens, but the specs aren't changing, and the prices are going up. The new MacBook Pro costs $5,000. They described in this article as eye-wateringly priced. I've Good. never seen a computer that made my eye water, but five grand. Now, it comes with the newest uh, Intel i9 processor, which is completely overrated anyway. The i9 is a joke. It's a, it's a, but when people buy computers, they look at the little card, and it says processor, and it says memory, and it has an amount, and it says hard drive, and it has an amount. Nobody asks about the speed of the hard drive. Nobody asks about the speed of the memory. And nobody asks, can my computer actually use that i9 processor? Yes, the i9 processor looks great, but can I use it? Turns out Apple in their MacBook Pro put the i9 processor in place of the i7. The i9 is a faster processor. It generates more heat. They didn't change the cooling system, though. So the i9 processor gets super hot with the i7 cooling system on it. It overheats and it, slow, it underclocks itself. It slows down until it cools off. So what they found is when you take the brand new 5,000 eye-wateringly priced $5,000 MacBook Pro and compare it to last year's MacBook Pro, last year's MacBook Pro is actually faster because the i9 gets underclocked. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, um, there's no update. So why would you buy a year and a half old technology at twice the price you could spend on a PC? And the other problem is, there is a solution in the PC market for every price point. If you have $300 to spend on a computer, you can go to Walmart and buy an Acer and get a $300 Windows 10 computer. If you want to get the $500, $600 entry level computer, you can get that chip on board computer from Best Buy, from Nebraska Furniture Mart, from Schrock Innovations. We sell a chip on board computer. We sell one chip on board computer. And the only reason we sell it is because our locations tend to be across the street from Best Buy's. I won't go into why, because Best Buy sends us a lot of business and we love Best Buy. So when people come over to us, we have to be like, well, where's your $600 computer? I saw one at Best Buy. We have to at least have one to say, this is the $600 computer right here but you don't want to buy it. I'll sell it to you, but you don't want to buy it. Some people still buy it anyway because they think, you know, it's a load of malarkey or whatever, but then they get mad at us, you know, 18 months later when they have to replace it. Well, we told you. You should buy the, if you're going to buy the $500, $600 computer and we offer you the extended warranty, which we do, for heaven's sake, you buy that warranty. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Because if one thing breaks in that laptop, it costs more to replace that one thing because everything is together than it does to buy a new computer. That warranty at Shrock, that refundable warranty that we give you your money back on if you don't use, buy it. It's a no-brainer. So Mac sales are diving, PC sales are climbing, and third article, let's face it, Windows PCs are now just better and cooler than Macs. When did you ever think you were gonna see that headline? Steve Jobs literally rolled in his grave when the guy wrote this. Because Macs have been, I mean, you have to admit, at a time when PCs were thick, clunky, plastic pieces of technology, Macs were beautiful works of art. They really are. They were and they are. Um, the screwless design, as a much of a pain in the butt as it is to work on, looks really slick. They look good. If you're going to sit at a coffee shop on a computer in you know, 2002, you wanted a Mac because you look cool. It looks good. And a lot of Mac users are actually buying that lifestyle. They're buying, they're buying a fashion accessory more than a computer, really, or a way of doing things or a concept of how the world should be. Microsoft is the big, bad company, and Apple is the innovative upstart that's, that's thinking differently. Remember that campaign, Think Differently? That, that's the brilliance of Steve Jobs. Now it's buy yesterday's technology. You can put it right on the window. Um, so I'm going to go. This guy says, I'm going to say something that I thought I would never say. Here we go. PCs have evolved to the point where they are now better 
and cooler than Max. There, I've said it, and I feel better. <laughs> Around this time last year, I wrote something that has stuck with me. <clears throat> Quote, remember when buying a Mac meant you got cutting edge technology? Nowadays, you're overpaying for old stale ideas wrapped in a thin and light aluminum shell. Over the past 12 months, I've looked, sometimes aghast, at how Apple has let the iMac lineup rot, while PC OEMs led by Microsoft and the Surface line have matured, broadened, and come to the point where there's a device at pretty much whatever price point buyers are looking at. I'm thinking, I think I'm kidding when I say the Mac lineup is stale and outdated. I'm not. Out of the current Mac lineup, the only models I'd even consider buying are from the MacBook Pro and the iMac Pro line. The rest have not seen a refresh in over a year, nearly four years when it comes to the Mac Mini, yet Apple is still asking top dollar for what is functionally outdated technology. And yet, while there's little doubt that the 2018 MacBook Pro is a beast of a system, it's also expensive, suffers from teething troubles right out of the gate. That's the heat problem I talked about. <clears throat> Issues which Apple promptly fixed. They set the fans to run 100% all the time. Eh, no one will notice that home. Uh, so unless you're buying an, a 2018 MacBook Pro for $5,000, um, Apple has nothing to offer you that isn't over a year old and comfortably beaten on the tech specs by a Windows system, usually from one of the big OEMs for less than $700. And the problem seems to be spreading even to the iPad Pro. Apple's high-end tablet aimed at professionals is now over a year old and in need of a refresh. And this weakness is giving the latest OEMs a chance to undermine the iPad. With an asking price of $650, over a year old makes me shake my head. Apple's focus is now entirely on annual updates to the iPhone. And in many ways, this makes sense given that the product is the company's biggest and most prolific cash cow. But narrowing Apple's focus is allowing it to lose valuable ground that it took over years to win. And the problem, Apple can let the Mac line go stale because Apple's not a computer company anymore. Thank you. It's now a company that sells the iPhone, which is great for Apple, but not great for people who use Macs. But Apple's billions aren't tied to the success or failure of the Mac. Desktops and portables are still part of the ecosystem, and having those devices supported keeps people in the ecosystem. If there are no new Macs, people will start to look elsewhere, and that weakens Apple's grip on users very true. So Apple fans are not going to just ditch the Apple computers today because they want to, but that day is coming if Apple doesn't start taking them seriously and giving their customers value. This is something, you know, marketing can take you a long ways, but Apple for a long time has marketed things that, that are commonplace as revolutionary. So an adapter, a lightning adapter that you can plug in either direction into the phone, it's the same as a USB-C adapter that most computers have. All the shock models have it now. Um, let's see, what else is there? The Mac Airport. The wireless router. That's what that is. It's a wireless router. Um, the Time Machine Backup. It's an external hard drive. You know, literally, the Apple takes like common tech things, gives them a shiny name and a shiny story, and says, ba -ba, here we go. You know, good. they do it well. But unfortunately, they're, they're not going to... You got, you've got to take care of your customers. You've got to give them new tech. You've got to improve your product over time. All right, from the FBI. Internet, this is the last story I've got today, guys. Internet of Things warning from the FBI. Your hacked devices are being used for cybercrime. Internet of Things devices. Now, everybody gets confused about what an Internet of Things devices is. Internet of Things basically means anything that's connected to the Internet, Okay. The internet was not designed to have all this garbage connected to it originally. We've modified it and layered and layered and layered and layered. It wasn't designed for e-commerce either. It was originally just for email. It wasn't even for web browsing. The World Wide Web was an, in, was an improvement, was a, um, an invention that was created and layered on top of an email system. So there you go. The Internet of Things devices, including routers, which every one of you has a wireless router of some sort at home, IP cameras, if you have a security system, you have IP cameras, and smart locks and connected doors, anything that connects to the internet, thermostats, any of that stuff, are being targeted by cyber criminals who are looking to exploit them as a gateway for hacking and cyber attacks. So the FBI is warning of this. This is common knowledge, but common knowledge to people in the industry, maybe not to people that are, that are not in the industry. Um, they can be abused by hackers if they're not secured by a password, uh, or they have the default password that comes with the device. Uh, internet of things are easy because many are shipped with poor security from China. Um, 
when securing when security loopholes are uncovered, some vendors will push out firmware and software updates in order to prevent vulnerabilities from being exploited. But the small manufacturers in China will not. Um, in the worst case scenario, some vendors have been known to not act on security vulnerabilities and carry on as if nothing has happened. That's exactly what manufacturers in China do. All right, IoT botnets, Internet of Things botnets. That's when you take a whole bunch of people's thermostats, cameras, things, and get them to act together like an army. Uh, like a phalanx of soldiers going out and attacking something else, like the MasterCard website. Remember when MasterCard stopped processing payments for uh, Julian Assange from WikiLeaks at the behest of the U.S. government? They got attacked with a denial of service attack. That was an Internet of Things botnet. Um, let's see. Users are told to change default usernames and passwords, ensure that all patches are applied, and keep connected devices on a segmented network. Okay. Change usernames and passwords. When you first set up the equipment, it should ask you for a password. Set a password, okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, set a password. All right, what was the next thing here that they recommended? <clears throat> We're going to go through these one at a time. Okay, change usernames and passwords. Ensure that patches are applied. Okay, so this is your router. Your wireless router gets patches that do not automatically apply. You have to manually apply them, and it's different for every router. So please check the instruction manual that came with your router on how to apply firmware updates directly from the manufacturer's website. Thank you. We can do this for you, too. We do usually have to send a tech on site to do it, but we can, we can check this out, too. So if you have a Shrock tech coming out to your home to do something, um, other than a free pickup and drop-off, and literally that's like a ding-dong, hi, let me take it. But if we're coming out to, to work on a problem for you, while we're there, ask the guys to check to see if there's any updates for your router. We're happy to do that for you. It's, it doesn't, it takes, but if you know what you're doing, it takes but five minutes. Um, but we can add that on for you. Um, and then the next thing, which is a segmented network. Okay, what is a segmented network? All right, a segmented network means you're, op you're only allowing the Internet of Things devices in your home to get the bare minimum access they need. So in other words, your, your thermostat can see the Internet, but it can't see any other devices on your network. Your, uh, if you have a cable converter, that is an Internet of Things device, if you have a, a DVR. Um, your DVR is able to see the internet, but it is not able to see any other device on the network. That prevents the bad guys from in entering your network in one spot and then moving through all of your devices, um, which is a really technical thing for a user to set up. Um, that's technical for my guys to set up, um, and usually backfires because, for example, Samsung devices. I got a brand new stove, a brand new range. It's a Samsung range. We got that because, guess what? It connects with my Samsung phone and my watch. So literally... I can set the oven to delay start, so while I'm driving home, I can start the oven preheating, so when I get home, it's preheated. Um, or if my kids are using the oven while I'm not home, I can look at my Samsung Smart Things app and see that my oven is being used. I can see what the temperature is set to and how long it's been on. If I leave the house and think, did I forget to turn off the oven? I can look at my app and see, and I can actually turn it off from my app. It's pretty cool stuff, right? That's an Internet of Things device, and every appliance now. And when I walk in, to Lowe's. My phone, my Samsung phone is like, bing, 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 bing. Sounds like a slot machine. Look at all the things we've found. Want to add them all? No, I don't. So remember, guys, change your passwords, do all that work, and you too will have devices that are safe from hacking our election systems, for example. All right, scrolling down here through the comments. Let's see. Last call for questions, guys. I'm going to have to get going here. I, they're gonna, he's going to kick me out of the studio if I stay much longer. No. <laughs> he says, no. All right. I may see a company game gamer. Usually you can pick those out though. Fake oh the fake reviews. Yeah, you can. The problem is that most consumers don't look at the actual reviews, Thomas. They look at the uh, the stars. And then they they look at the stars and say, Okay, he's got this is a two star company, I'm not even gonna call them. They don't bother to go read the review and say, Okay, this person's being unreasonable or this person's from the Ukraine. They just see the stars and they move on. So uh, literally, the stars, those reviews are super important. But what's also super important is making sure that you vote for us in the Best of Omaha competition. Um, the Best of Omaha competition, uh, even if you're not in Omaha, I would encourage you to vote for us. And yes, maybe that's a little meh, but yes, Best Burger, you can write McDonald's because you have to vote for like five things. But you can go to this link, I'm going to type it in for you, www.bestofomaha.com, and we have a quick vote code which is 18328. So if you use that link to join to vote in the Best of Omaha, it'll automatically register your vote for Schrock. You have to vote for like four other things. 
um, so if there's other small businesses that you know of, please vote for the small businesses that, that will appreciate the you know, winning Best of Omaha. But here's the thing. This is my, I wouldn't say it. This is, this is my socialist intervention to you. Should we win the Best of Omaha, we will be invited to attend the Best of Omaha Festival. The Best of Omaha Festival is an opportunity for us to spend ridiculous amounts of money on a trade show booth. Uh, and then people, they give us a fistful of tickets that we can give away. And then people line up, literally they line up around the building. And then they come in, and there's all kinds of games and party. It's a big party. There's usually free beer or discounted beer. Last year, the beer was really flat, though. So, But uh, I don't drink, but I was told the beer was really flat. Uh, but I, but it was funny because there was this one lady who would take anyone's coupons, so we were just everybody was giving this one lady their coupon, and she was one of the vendors. We were just seeing how drunk she would get at the at her trade show booth, you know. <laughs> Eventually, she's like, "Would you like a free van?" Yeah. You know. <laughs> but uh, and we always do something fun there. So I've been accumulating cool tech prizes. We get little bonuses from time to time. You know, we we order things, and people say, "Well, if you leave us a review, we'll send you a free set of headphones or whatever." So I've got a hundred dollar set of headphones. I've got some portable speakers, I've got some backup batteries, and of course we have some Schrock products there too, but I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm just waiting to give away at the Best of Omaha Festival. But if we don't win Best of Omaha, we don't get invited. And if you don't get invited, it's invitation only, you can't go. So, with that in mind, vote for us in the Best of Omaha Festival, click our button, the Best of Omaha competition, we'll get invited to the festival if we win, and we'll give away a lot of free stuff. So. Check it out there. All right, guys. Thank you for sticking with me on the show today. I appreciate it. I got to run, but we'll see you again next Sunday for another edition of Compute This.